this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 38. In this video tutorial, I am going to talk about how a dynamic SQL snapshot is technically correct but functionally incorrect. Okay, this slide talks about the problem scenario. So the scenario is we have two tables, sales.emp and hr.emp. Like uh, sales department employees will be in sales.emp table, hr department employee uh, data is maintained in hr.emp table. So the, those two are physically two different tables. The number of records can be different, run stats details can be different, distribution statistics can be different, uh, volume of data can be different, uh, type of data can be different, and uh, their read write access patterns, uh, usage of the tables, everything can be different. Okay. Uh, now application one queries sales.emp. They are using set current schema sales and select star from EMP. That's the query they are executing. And application two also queries. Um, hr.emp table so there the application again uses the statement set current schema hr and after that they uh, issue a, a statement select star from emp now even though these two applications are uh, using the same statement query text like select star from emp that's the statement query text the underlying uh, tables that these uh, query access is completely different right so after running uh, these two queries from application one and application two, if you look at the dynamic SQL snapshot output, uh, you will find that the dynamic SQL snapshot treats it as a single query. So it is not reporting uh, two queries. Instead, it is just reporting a single query, select star from EMP, and all the monitor metrics are aggregated across these uh, compilations and executions. So what happens is uh, the monitor metrics are aggregated across different tables, right? So the number of uh, records, the type of logs, uh, the, the the CPU time, everything. So uh, since the nature of uh, the, the query text is the same, it is aggregating it everything into the uh, same uh, uh, based on the SQL statement query text rather than the context of the execution, right? So, so all the metrics are kind of uh, uh, incorrect. Uh, whatever we, we conclude becomes actually incorrect data actually. So what is the uh, solution for this? So the workaround is you, you can use explicit schema qualifiers. So instead of saying select star from EMP, you can say select star from sales.emp, select star from hr.emp, then it will be treated as different queries. But that requires an application change. So su suppose you are debugging something and you are finding such type of uh, uh, scenario, you are landing up in uh, such type of scenario. So what is the solution for that? So the solution for that is to use the routine sysproc.mon underscore get underscore package cage statement Okay, uh, the details of this routine, how to use this routine, what are all the arguments it takes. So I, uh, you can look in the uh, info center, it has a detailed documentation for this routine. So when you use this routine, instead of the dynamic SQL snapshot for monitoring, it will uh, report the output, the, the, it will report the output uh, where the monitor metrics are based on the executable ID rather than the SQL text. So uh, like for each execution of the SQL statement text, different execution IDs are assigned uh, based on the context in which they execute. Uh, see, see in our example, uh, select star from EMP was considered a single query uh, in, in the previous uh, uh, typical uh, dynamic snapshot, right? Whereas this particular uh, routine will treat those two executions as two different execution IDs, right? So even though the SQL statement text is the same, still it will assign different execution IDs for it and all the monitoring uh, metrics values or will be based on this executable ID rather than that SQL text so that then it will give you a correct picture. Okay. Uh, even though you find out, okay, this particular executable ID is for this particular execution, uh, still it, it will not contain the schema name, right? The, the query doesn't contain the schema name. How will we map uh, the executable ID with the schema name? So for that, uh, we need to generate the explain plan for the particular executable ID. So for that, you can use the routine sysproc.explain underscore from underscore section. Again, refer the info center for detailed uh, documentation of this routine, like what are all the arguments needs to be passed and everything. Uh, so once this routine is executed, it will populate the explain tables with the actual explain data. And you can use the db2 exfmt command for displaying the explain plan. So let me just quickly demonstrate you the uh, uh, scenario with an example. So it will be somewhat clear. Uh, so here actually uh, these are some initial steps that I have already completed. So I started the instance, activated the database, I am uh, switching off the health monitor, auto maintenance like that and I am uh, switching on the uh, switch for the statement monitor 
and uh, I'm running the explain.ddl. So the explain tables are already there. Okay. And this is the sales.emp table which contains three records and hr.emp table which contains six records. Okay. And what I'm going to do is here in terminal one, I'm going to say set current schema sales and select start from EMP. Okay. So this is my terminal. So here you are finding actually three terminals. This is terminal one, this is terminal two, this is terminal three. Okay. It's a tabbed interface. Okay. So, okay. So first, uh, select start from EMP, three records. It will be, uh, it is actually sales.emp, only three records are there. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is in terminal two, I'm going to say set current schema HR and select star from EMP. So this is in the second terminal. So this will fetch six records for me. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is in terminal three, I'm going to uh, get the uh, snap dyn SQL, sysibm adm dot snap dyn SQL. So it is like a get snapshot command, equivalent of get snapshot command. And I am running and I am going to show you the output. Okay. So in the terminal three, look at this now. See here, this is the thing. So select star from EMP. The statement text is only one. One record is only shown here. It's not, see we have executed twice and the underlying tables are different, but still the dynamic SQL snapshot will treat it as a single uh, statement text only. And you can see the number of compilations is two, number of executions is two. So it was compiled once for HR schema and it was compiled again for sales schema. So two compilations and two executions, but all the metrics are grouped here. See rows red is 29. Whereas we have read only nine rows, right? See if you look at here, three rows here and six rows here, right? But it is showing 29 because it is taking for compilations and executions, everything, right? So the metrics are aggregated across executions, even though the it's a statement text based aggregation, right? It's not execution based aggregation. Okay. So that's what. Now what we'll do is we'll use the uh, other query like that I was talking mon get package cage statement d means dynamic minus two means for all member okay so I'll copy this so I'll show you the output of this query okay so select num executions num compilation statement text rows red okay same uh, kind of information oh sorry I I think I <laughs> executed the same query again sorry about that okay so I click copy. Okay, now we will execute it one more time. Okay, this is a different uh, thing. Yeah, see now you can see here statement text select star from EMP, right? There are two records here and it will show the exact number. See six records here and three records here. Like one is for the sales and another one is for HR. You can see the number of rows red is different and it is more uh, correct value also, right? And you can see this executable ID. This is what I was telling. Each execution will be given one unique executable ID. So using this executable ID, we can easily find out, uh, like, you know, the, the metrics are grouped based on the executable ID. Hence it, it reports a correct uh, thing. Okay. So now I'll just copy this particular, both the execution IDs I'll copy. Okay. Uh, we need to identify the schema name, right? From the execution executable ID, we should identify the schema name, right? So let us just paste that. Okay. The first one is done. So for that, I'll be calling uh, the stored procedure explain from section. Okay. So I pasted the uh, executable ID and I'm copying that. Okay. So let me just paste that and run. So you can see that it, so the explain plan has been generated for that executable ID and a timestamp has been given. So I'll copy this timestamp because we need to put, uh, give that as an input to the exfmt command okay so we will copy that here okay and also here so this is the explain for that executable id similarly we have to change the second one also okay uh, for that actually i need to go here so this is the second query so take that executable id also copy this okay and uh, paste it here so this will actually so second time i am running the same uh, uh, explain call from section because we need to uh, get the explain plan for the second uh, execu executable ID also. So again, I'll be running here with a different uh, executable ID. Okay. So that will again give me a different timestamp. Okay. So let us copy that timestamp and uh, 
note it down here so for this executable id this is the timestamp okay then i can use the exfmt uh, command to uh, i will run the exfmt command so the explain plan is generated now i am going to just uh, see the uh, the explain plan so from that explain plan we can know the schema name that is the uh, approach okay so we'll just run this explain plan is running so you can see that here itself hr.emp so this particular executable id right so 13 so 8384 that executable id is using hr.emp you can see here right so just note it down so see 138384 so this is for hr.emp so this particular executable id is for hr.emp so you can see in the output also uh, here 8384 is executable id number of records is 6 see hr table has 6 records right so it is matching that also so obviously uh, 986 should be 3 records so it should be sales uh, uh, stuff only okay so we'll just execute that also and we'll see okay. copy this and come here okay so we have generated the explain plan you can see that it is a sales.emp table right you can see in the access id 986 right so it is accessing sales.emp table okay so this is how the uh, mon get package catch statement right so this is the routine that we have used it's a very useful routine to output the metrics at uh, executable id level right so you can see here the output as well so two queries even though the statement text is same still the, it will be tracked with unit executable ids and uh, uh, report the metrics at an executable id level so this kind of monitoring is very useful in such uh, uh, cases where sql snapshot present a limitation uh, that's it in this video tutorial thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel db2luw academy see you in the next video tutorial thanks bye bye